everyone. The stock market has seen incredible gains over the last few years, from traditional retail stocks to the Bitcoin surge and the Reddit GameStop saga. But one thing all of these have in common is who they're leaving behind. According to the data by the Federal Reserve, only 33.5% of black households own stocks in 2019, compared to 61% of white households. Joining me now is Tanya Evans, who is the professor at Penn State Dickinson Law, Chair Maker Foundation and CEO and uh, of Advantage Evans LLC. You've got all the titles, so you've got all the experience and the insight that we need to, we need to really get here. Uh, thank you so much for joining us and being here. Why are minorities so left behind in this system? It's a great question. I'm so glad that you were focused on this topic at this moment in time to kick off um, Black history because essentially uh, decentralized finance and financial technology or fintech, it exists at the, intersect of, the intersection of finance and technology. And so that means that it becomes this microcosm of how the Black community in particular, Black and Brown communities, others who have historically been not only underestimated, but under uh, woefully underrepresented. And so when you find yourself either at the axis of finance or tech, when you are in this intersection of the two, you have even more of the problems that systemically exist in either finance or tech. Certainly. Okay. And so the GameStop Reddit saga, if we start there, has been seen as a victory for the underdogs, a David and Goliath story. Where do minorities fit into this from what you've been taking away as we continue to see more and more updates to this story every single day? Yes, that is the fast moving storm. Every time I close my eyes and open them again, there's something else that has happened. I, I look at it this way. I felt in some sense it was the 5% against the 1%. And then you have the rest of the people who were added on at the end, many of whom are in black and brown communities. I understand that over 50% of those using Robinhood actually had some exposure with GameStop, for example, that may have been left holding the bag. So on one hand, I understand the economic justice of utilizing the existing rules in the current financial system of shorting. The, I mean, I, as far as I can see, there were no laws or rules. I know they'll have commissions and, and reports about what has happened, but I didn't really see it in that way. It seemed like it was playing itself out in plain view. The question is, whether the black community has access to the same level of information, even on Reddit. Technically speaking, it's available. You can see the discussions going on. Uh, but I am concerned of those who got stuck on the app in particular and had all of the exposure, but none of the ability to pull themselves out or are prevented from actually taking advantage once the stock soars. So I'm more concerned on the back end of why some continue to be able to operate to protect the existing system and others get left holding the bag in some instance. I want to talk about Bitcoin as well. Bitcoin's recent bull run, it, it ushered in a new wave of the uber wealthy. And so minorities left behind there. From what we've seen, minorities, why are we missing out in especially the cryptocurrency space that really is new over these past 10 to 15 years? And it originated much of it beyond, you know, of course, the original Satoshi white paper and so forth, it started and gained legs within these Reddit communities as well. Exactly. And I think that there are a number of reasons why the black community may be sitting on the sidelines. A lot of it is there are a number of things for across the board for people to have access to something that seems so inaccessible and nuanced as a matter of user interface and experience. And it's very it can be very wonky. And also traditionally in the black community, we focus on the sure bet. We focus on, well, at least in some sense, the sure bet of, of real estate or taught to get a high paying job by insurance, but less inclined to learn a lot about even just traditional fiscal principles or focusing on equities that will hopefully appreciate over time and intergenerational wealth. And so for all of those reasons, and I've heard a lot, you know, I teach from uh, cash to crypto to try to 
educate black communities about, and not even to buy something in particular, but to know, to be informed about the decisions, but thinking that they may be illegal or again, locked out of traditional um, or emerging asset classes that can be a major impediment to um, the comfort level that the black community would need in order to um, not look at it so curious, or look at it curiously rather than uh, repelled by the thought that it might be illegal or too risky. Absolutely. And just lastly, while we have you, you know, it'd be interesting to know from your perspective what steps need to be taken, should be taken to ensure that minorities don't miss out on the next technology revolution um, as we've been watching to this point, at least with cryptocurrency. Right. Um, there's so much opportunity here to uh, focus on some of the benefits that come from a decentralized platform to really remove some of the traditional impediments to black and brown communities participating meaningfully and successfully in finance. Uh, when I think about redlining or disparities in lending, the ability to use decentralized finance that really has the potential to completely reinvent the world's financial systems. I think of the ability to merge like scaling and the familiarity with traditional uh, economy with the security and efficiency and transparency of decentralized finance, the ability to leverage crypto in order to have loans in a way that traditionally we are, don't have access to. There's some really important reasons why learning about it, which is the first step, and then becoming com uh, comfortable with the technology, with the lingo, and to safely, legally, and confidently uh, really participate meaningfully in the future of money. Tanya Evans, professor at Penn State Dickinson Law, Chairmaker Foundation, and of course the CEO of Advantage Evans LLC. Thank you so much for joining us here today. We appreciate the time and